This is the second Sunday after Advent, and our lessons for this morning focus on our preparation and our readiness for God. Our first lesson is a word of prophecy from Isaiah, and it was the basis for some of the music you heard before worship this morning from George Friedrich Handel's Messiah. The words of Isaiah foretelling of John the Baptist, the one who would come and prepare the way. It's almost like if you were traveling through Palestine about that time, you could see all those orange and black signs that say, construction ahead, <laughs> road under repair, because they were making way for the king, which is precisely what would happen when the king would travel. The king wouldn't go up and down hills. They would level the road so that the king could ride on a level path. And so it is here. And the prophet tasks the one who is to come by saying, Comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out! And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fades but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Fill up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will flee, feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Here ends our first lesson. Turn with me to page 254 in the front of the hymnals. We'll read selected verses from Psalm 85. The first two. And then verses 8 through 13, we'll read them antiphonally. That means I'll read the first half of the verse up to the asterisk, and you read the second half. Page 284, Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for, for he, he is speaking, speaking peace to his faithful, faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that and that his glory may dwell in our land. land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and, and our, our land, land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and, and peace shall, shall be a pathway for his feet. feet. Our second lesson from the prophet, or the, the apostle Peter, who speaks to us in one of his letters about the coming day of the Lord. From the second letter of Peter, chapter 3, Verses 8 through 15. Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. 
With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. Here ends the second lesson. In our gospel for this morning, we hear the beginning of the gospel of Mark. The beginning of the good news is how he writes it, because the word gospel means good news. Therefore, evangelism is the process of spreading the good news. And an evangelist, which refers to every single one of us, is someone who shares good news. This is the gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We'll sing hymn number 424. 